Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Simmons, the Executive Director of Raising Our Kids Incorporated. I have um, sent out one video that was giving support through this COVID-19 to parents, how we can get our kids started on a schedule. And I wanna know, how you doing on that schedule? Are you sticking to it? Are you make sure that we are doing everything possible to keep our kids academically engaged? And I really wanna stress, sticking to a schedule, making out a schedule, put it on the refrigerator. As soon as the kids wake up, they know their schedule. They know how many minutes of the day at each subject is, you're gonna have a lot of for each subject, everything. They need a schedule. Just like you punch in your time clock on your work, they have to punch in at school. So stay to the schedule and everything. So I wanna know how you doing. Make some comments below. Were you able to keep it going? Because I, I'm here to help you to make sure they know that this is a time that we really need to keep them on the schedule. We, I cannot stress that enough. And this segment is called, You're Gonna Learn Today. Yes, every day during the academic time schedule, your kid is going to learn. And we're gonna go right to it, the resources, how to help, how to stay on that schedule, giving you the support that you need to keep your children or child on that schedule. I cannot stress it enough. If it is a nine to two schedule like I propose, or 1030 to three, whatever it is. Let me tell you something. During this time, it's very different. It's, it's not like a spring break. It's not like a winter break. It's not like a, an extended summer break or early summer break that some districts you have um, just a packet to do and you have a page a day for each subject to do. This is different. We have never been through a pandemic before. You, I, the district, the teachers, none of us have experienced this. So therefore, our thinking needs to be differently. Our kids will still be in session. They will still have the allotted times for their um, particular subject with the abundance of the work, getting them ready for state assessments or even college readiness programs. So this is different. We, we just can't have them doing a page a day. Or even if there's a district that has assignments scheduled for them, just that one assignment may not be enough. Let me tell you something. If the assignments that the district or the teacher is assigning them, if it does not equal 90 minutes of literacy, 90 minutes of literacy, then you, we need for you to sub, put some more materials together for your child on literacy. Uh, 90, 60 minutes of math. They need that. These are state requirements. Whatever your state is, it, you can find it on their website. How many minutes in each grade, in each subject that they need. That should be equated to the schedule. So that 90 minutes of literacy, then that 60 minutes of math, then the 30 to 60 minutes of social studies and science. So the, the districts are just doing the best they can, uh, keeping the things going and trying to do, and the, and the teachers are doing the best they can, especially if they're not used to the distant learning, trying to just keep things abreast and going. But if they were in their classrooms, of course, the substantial amount of work and everything would be just more, it would be more. So we have to compensate with that, with our kids. We just have to. We cannot allow this time to elapse and let our kids to relax and do frivolous recreational things when they need to be doing something academic, academic engagement. That's why setting them on a schedule, put your um, phone on the alarm when it's time to 
do the reading, when it's time to do the math, when it's time for lunch, social studies and science. Put an alarm on your phone. And during that first video, I talked about breaks. If you wanna give your child like a brain break or whatever, put a timer on the phone. During every 10 minutes, you get a three minute brain break, whatever the case is. It, it goes from child to child or whatever. Some of them kids, some of your kids, they can sit there and do the allotted work without a break. Some of them, yes, they can. So you know your child. Please um, adhere as possible. But let me tell you, whatever we do, do not give in and let them win. They're not going to win this. And I mean, they're our kids. Our kids going to try to say, please, we don't need a schedule. Oh, I had one student, one child, when I was calling the parents just to see how things were going, he was playing video games. I'm like, what are you doing? You should be doing some work. He told me, he told me, my head is already big. I don't need to do any more work. I said, no, but you need to fill it. You need to fill your head with stuff. You know, the, the parent was napping at the time, so therefore, I called her phone, he answered the phone, and I was having this conversation. This is what your kids are saying behind you. This is what your kids are telling other adults when you thinking that, let me just take a nap or I'm gonna go into the other room and do my work because I'm still on home assignment or whatever. Your kids are telling other adults. Have the nerve to tell me, Dr. Simmons, <laughs> he doesn't need to do any more learning because his head is big already. I can't make this up. That is a real true story, true statement. And happened three days ago. So it wasn't like two weeks ago. We need to stay on our kids. We need to make sure they know this is the expectation and everyone is going to do it. This is their job. What else do they have to do? There are 24, 24 hours in a day. If you just allow your child to do one hour, what are they doing the other hours? What? So, I'm not here to fuss at you protecting. I'm just going to give you that motivation, that support, that coaching that you need to say, hey, don't give in and let them win. We're not giving in. We're gonna do this together. We're gonna make sure our kids are staying on target. So say it with me. Don't give in and let them win. Don't. <laughs> now, I've written down some comments and concerns that some people have had since our first video. And if you haven't checked out the first video, please check it out. It just gives you um, a standard type of schedule, how to stick to it. And let me ask you, did you give your kids the Apple test? Please, if you have not, stop this video right now and ask your child to name you three apples. Three. Only three. Now, if you come back and they have said red, green, and yellow, we got some family field trips to do. And you don't have to look at that first video to know what I mean by family field trips because there are over so many types of apples and red, green, and yellow are not any of the three that they should be naming. So again, experiences. Our kids should not just be existing in this world. They should be experiencing everything in this world. So, the apple test. Don't forget it. Make comments below. Tell me, what did your kids say when you asked them? What was their answer? Make the comment below because I, I want to know. I'm, I'm doing an a unofficial study on it. You, random kids, what age group, and everything. So please make those comments below. Let me go to some of the concerns in making sure we keep the overarching goal in mind. Our overarching goal that we want our kids 
at the end product when they become um, adults is to become independent because we want them out of our house self-sustaining and positive contributors to society now whatever they choose to do in their career go go forward we support them on that as long as they become independent self-sustaining financially and positive contrib contributors to society when you keep those goals in mind everything else makes so much sense keeping them on a schedule makes so much sense that is a life skill if they ever want to be successful in life of doing anything they need to put their priorities in front of them and they need to work at it they cannot just haphazardly go about the day and not have any type of direction so having a schedule is just getting them to know this is a life learned lesson this is a life skill keep them on that schedule now i already talked about the pandemic times i already talked about this is not like a spring break summer break winter break when certain districts uh, may just give you some work for your kid to just sustain their learning from the quarter before or whatever this is during the time they should be in class in a school building so we need to really make sure we are doing our due diligence and keeping up with what they need to learn now your state department of education website should have tips for parents should have what your child needs to know on this grade level so i'm from ohio and the ohio department of education website i went on it i clicked the parent tab and then it ne nearly says well if my child is in kindergarten preschool first grade and then they give me some things some resources or what my child needs to know to be uh if it's a preschool kindergarten ready so what my child needs to know that's greatly important and we can always know what I, to prepare them for the next grade we need to do that and some of the comments that i have received or had conversations with was a parent said when the last video you mentioned the quality of work how do i know the work is of quality you know they say i'm not a teacher i look and i see my child is doing work i glance at it how do i know it's quality well that is kind of um subjective what you find quality is what probably i find different in quality say that the child has been given an assignment through their teacher digitally and then they have to submit it my thing is before they submit it you tell them you need to review it and it's not like you have to redo the work or do the work for them please don't do that because we usually do the work for our kids our kids get all the right answers and where's the learning they learn by getting things wrong and have to come back and correct it to see exactly where their error is so don't do their work don't do it but when you review you can pretty much go through a quality type of check if they are to answer a question in a reading passage are they answering in a complete sentence if the reading passage is about you know something um if the reading passage is about ice cream and they're talking about video games sometimes there's a big huge disconnect come on man nah we know that's not quality if they are just giving one word very superficial answers of that nature especially in math math is kind of easy to kind of glance to see if it's quality not to say if it's right not to say if the answer is right because you're not there to correct their answers to get them to get straight a's you're not there for that you're there for them to learn and support that 
if they don't have scrap paper and they're not doing they just thinking they can just do it in their heads and the distant learning is more multiple choice they can just click on certain things or drag and drop or whatever they need to show you on paper how they got that answer they really do that's a, that's of quality if they really put some brain muscle to it they can show you on paper or even tell you you can randomly ask how did you get this answer again open-ended question how did how did you get this answer show me how you got this answer prove to me that this answer is correct they should be able to do that now you know your child you know if your child was a straight a student before the covid pandemic you know your if your child was struggling now if your child is struggling they're not just going to become straight a students so if your child was struggling then you know that there's some more uh, monitoring that you have to do you just have to keep them on the radar and everything you don't have to sit down and teach it them teach it to them but you need to keep them pretty much um engaged they need uh, they will you know kind of space out get back to your work they would try to skirt squirm out of the work get back to your work we teachers have to do this in in the classroom all the time you probably got some phone calls uh robin wasn't paying attention today or while i was teaching robin was talking to you know her friends and everything robin's very talkative whatever you used to hear with the teachers when they call you keep that in mind keep keep that in mind now it's just you and your ch child or children so therefore um they don't have this whole classroom of distractions and they don't have nobody to call you because you are the person that's the end all be all because <laughs> some of our kids they love to say mom but they lying or I did this or I did my work that's it you're there you're monitoring them you can see that they are doing the quality of work and using the time in its full capacity so let me go to the next concern um okay the next concern was like a follow-up if it's not quality you mentioned to move on um, I did mention to move on so you can stick with your schedule and then you revisit it the next day. We'll say that you know your kid is just trying to play, play on you, play on your timing and things of that nature. I suggest because consequences are real, like I tell <laughs> some of my students, you may not think, um, you don't think fat meat is greasy. Yes, fat meat is greasy. So therefore, if you wasted 10 minutes of your math time or whatever, I'm going to put 10 minutes on Saturday. Uh, you wasted 20 minutes of your reading time because um, you were supposed to, you know, read this book and you didn't start it. You can find it conveniently. It was misplaced. Whatever the case is, your kids are going to try you. Then 20 minutes is put on the Saturday. So I wouldn't extend the nine to two for your sake, not for the kids' sake, because kids can learn for eight hours just like we work have to work for eight hours. But for your sake to keep things just consistent and less stressful, I wouldn't extend that nine to two or whatever schedule you set. I would just put on some minutes for Saturday and everything. So um, get the kids to know you can do it now or you're gonna do it later but you're gonna do it you are going to learn today that's the topic yes now uh, let me go on to the next one oh. <laughs> this one says mm, if I hear that's not how my teacher does it one more time <laughs> if I hear that one more time I know I know listen don't stress out let me tell you let me give you some more encouragement supportive words you know maybe you need a walk a breath of fresh air get out there just kind of put everything in perspective the overarching goal is for the new kind of independent 
self-sustaining and to be a positive contributor to society. You are not trying to hurt them <laughs> and give them that back and forth. Don't do it. Guess what? You're bigger than them. Well, most of us are bigger than them. If they become bigger than us, then okay, we're older than them. We're smarter than them. You know, we've been on this earth longer than them. And if they, you know, I say, if they live on this earth longer than you, then they can kind of tell you. But that would never happen. <laughs> that would never happen. So therefore, um, yeah, baby, that's how your teachers tell me. Why don't you show me? Teach me how your teacher does it. I would love to know how your teachers show you. And it doesn't have to be in that type of sar sarcastic way. But that's giving them a chance to become the teacher themselves. Oh, wow. Teach me something. Because this is how we learned it when I was in school. So is there a new way? Show me. And give them the opportunity to become the teacher themselves. Because guess what? They are being, um, at least they're being invested in their education. At least they're they're trying to say, okay, um, this is a good way or I don't understand your way because my teacher teaches a, it a different way. Okay, well, show me how your teacher teaches it. Maybe we can adapt to it. I was just trying to help. So that can be a, a, a comeback, a good comeback. Sometimes we just have to have good, <laughs> better comebacks than what our kids are, because they're going to try us. They are going to try us. The next comment or concern was, um, <laughs> I'm confused with this new math. Okay, okay. Guess what? I am too. <laughs> I am very confused with this new math. But, however, the researchers, people that's smarter than you and I, came up with this new way of um, doing math. And it's okay. It's a new way. Our kids are learning it. Some of us, our kids are getting it quicker than we got it. Our old math. Okay, fine. YouTube will be your friend. YouTube will be your friend. Whatever the new math is, whatever math grade level, even third grade can be a little bit challenging. And you know you're smarter than third grader. But YouTube will be your friend. You can put in that Khan Academy, K-H-A-N Academy. Khan Academy um, also give great tips and videos on how to do the math. And step by step, making sure that you put more of the responsibility of your, on your child. They're the ones that have to learn it and get a grade for it, not you. Also, if your child has to um, do the assignments digitally, have them ask questions to their teacher, email questions, comments or concerns. If their teacher is online or whatever, they have to take charge of their own education and that's what the teachers are getting paid for. That's what the teachers have learned to do. So therefore, it is not on you to have to learn this new math. Relieve yourself from that. It's not on you. So depending on the district and the supports that the district gives, you can do the self-supporting with YouTube and Khan Academy, or you can continuously suggest to your um, child to contact their teacher in a very strategic way. So, oh, the high school kids, the next concern is about high school and you pretty much allow your child to do their work independently, but you're not getting much feedback to know if they're doing it correctly. Again, I wanna say you know your child. You know if your child was a straight A student or your child was a struggling student or an average student. So therefore, you do need to monitor what your child is sending out and they should have contact with their teacher. So the teacher can also give you type of feedback of if they're not even trying or how can, how can you help them better. Let me tell you, true story, true story. Um, 
the one person I know, which is an educator, excellent educator, <laughs> I, excellent educator. Um, her child is in middle school and her child uh, was doing the assignments at their dining room table every day. And she really didn't bother the child because the child is a good kid, good kid and everything. But then she got a message from the child's math teacher like a week later that he did not turn in not one math assignment, not one. So this is even an educator to have issues of continuously trying to monitor their child and very um, upset that the child did not turn in that one math assignment, didn't say anything, just as quiet as kept at the table. That's why if you put the child on the schedule in certain subjects according to certain times, then you tell your child when the math alarm clock goes off, they are to show you before they submit the work. So therefore, you know that they're submitting that subject. They're not staying on other subjects long enough. And you know that they're doing the work and not embarrassing you. And then you have to do all that um, catching up and everything. So the last concern about tech issues, this um, one parent, in school herself so she knows the importance of keeping to a schedule and staying in school and things like that so she had no problem with that but she said that the computer um, crashed on her so she had to go to the store between the time for her being able to go to the store and getting another computer or whatever like that so she had just had her child do the packet the page a day and then he just went off and played video games don't 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 fall in that trap don't do that let me don't give in and let them win don't give in and let them win one of the issues that we administrators have during the day is kids staying off of their cell phones no you don't supposed to have your cell phone during class videotaping on instagram tiktok whatever the case is and, and they got a whole lot of other channels that I, I don't I don't even know how 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 it works um there's a whole there's so many educational apps that the child can get on so many educational apps that they can go to the play store and download and still be academically engaged academically engaged and there are even a lot of websites, educational websites, that are giving free programs and free, they're um, waiving their subscription costs because of the COVID-19. And they know that these are hard times for everybody. So I will put down some in the comments below. I will put some down and everything for people can go to if you think it's user-friendly or not. But... At the end of the day, tell your child, you're going to learn today. Yes, you are. You're going to learn today. And every day, at the start of the day, look in the mirror and say, do not give in and let them win. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Please press the subscribe, the like, the thumbs up thing, the like, and um the notification that bell notification so the next video we can just stay in tune we need to get this together if i need to be just your your cheerleader your coach whatever i need to do i need to pump you up to make sure that we're still alive we're still doing this together keeping our kids safe and academically engaged academically engage do not give in and let them win thank you again i'm dr robinson and i'm the executive director of raising our kids and we're gonna do it together bye